We're now some 60 days away from the election, and this week the GOP came out in full force to rally behind the president during his historic Republican National Convention. Tonight, we're bringing you the big moments with a slew of guests you'll only see right here on America This Week. So buckle up, things are about to get interesting. As the once every four year convention season winds down, I thought we should go over a few things before we begin the final stretch in the race for the presidency. Last week, the Dems made it clear how they plan to win. They used the DNC stage to highlight what they see as their biggest strength, Joe Biden's empathy. They reminded us over and over again, their candidate is empathetic. So Joe knows the anguish of sitting at a table with an empty chair. Joe knows what it's like to struggle. Joe knows. They're clearly trying to show Biden as the anti-Trump. They portrayed Trump as cold, self-dealing, and ineffective as a leader. There was little, if any, policy mentioned during the whole week-long convention. It was a lot of Joe's a nice guy, Joe's had a tough life, and even more, Joe's not Trump. That's what experienced campaign advisors do when their candidate lacks the it factor, that ability to grab the attention of the audience and therefore the voters. They play to the emotional side of their guy or gal. I would sum up the Dems platform as running more against Trump than for Joe Biden. And the message was, if you vote for Trump, America is going down a dark path. Now, personally, if I were running their campaign, I would try to highlight how America under President Biden would prosper and remain the most powerful nation in the world. But hey, I'm not running their horse. They know what Biden can and can't do, I guess. Then it was the Republicans' turn, and we saw a very different convention. This wasn't all about the candidate. Sure, Trump made appearances throughout the convention, but it was Trump policy that was a star of the Republican show, not necessarily the candidate. Night after night, we heard about the violence in the streets of Wisconsin, Portland, Seattle, Chicago, New York, and city after city. Trump and his speakers promised to stop the violence running rampant on Main Street, USA. Speaker after speaker asked, do you want more violence in the streets? Then vote for Joe. It's almost like this election is shaping up to be church, work, and school versus rioting, looting, and vandalism. Or, in the words of Biden and the Democrats, peaceful protesting. That's a fair assessment given the fact that there are almost zero instances of either Joe Biden or Kamala Harris denouncing Antifa or any of the violent protesters. Check it out. Get back to me. 888-601-0032. Call me if you find one. I listen to all those messages, by the way. So Biden's campaign going forward will be likely America is in a, quote, dark place under Trump. A vote for Joe will save us from the darkness. After all, he's a nice guy. Conversely, Trump painted an optimistic future for America. Vote for Trump. Life is good. America is great. And since I'm the law enforcement candidate, speaking for Trump, I'll save your neighborhoods. It was a simple yet effective message given the riots and bloodshed on the news night after night. There's less than 10 weeks to go. Who do you think is ahead right now? Remember, the polls don't matter, not a bit. They're a crutch used by political pundits who are just too lazy to do analysis for themselves. In 2016, I called the presidential election for Trump from the very beginning. I saw what the polls weren't seeing. There was enthusiasm around candidate Trump. People wanted something different. They wanted a non-politician president. The pundits scoffed at me. The polls were telling them how wrong I was. This year's a tougher call though. COVID has made it a bit difficult to read enthusiasm. However, I'll call it again for President Trump. Shocker, right? But guess what? I'm basing it on this time. It's certainly not the polls and it's not even the candidate like last time. This time, I think people have had it with the violence in the streets. I also think America is sick and tired of the disrespect to our flag, to our national anthem, to our country that Biden, Harris, and the left seem to be afraid to denounce. I know Americans deep down are decent people. I think many Americans may be afraid to stand up for the flag and the anthem and to support law enforcement in public. They're afraid to be called racist or they'll get pummeled by the social media cancel culture army, again, in public. But once they get into the voting booth and pull the curtain closed where no one can see where they're voting, who they're voting for, I believe decency, 
patriotism and the desire to be safe will take over and draw them, you, to vote for Trump. Like the man or not, he'll protect what is America, what America's really all about, law and order, the right to protect our families, our businesses, and our property. Quick quiz as we head into the election. True or false, the candidate with the most votes counted is the winner. That's false. The candidate who reaches 270 electoral votes wins. In 2016, Hillary Clinton got 3 million votes more than Trump, but since Hillary won California and New York, she beat Trump in total votes. Trump won more states and therefore electoral votes to cement the win. Now, if you think that's odd or unfair, it's really not. Think of a baseball game. It doesn't matter which team has more hits during the game. It only matters who scores more runs. True or false, the presidential election is held every four years on the first Tuesday in November. False, it's held on the Tuesday following the first Monday in November. Did I get you? Finally, true or false, this will be one of the most important elections of our lifetime and will be a lot of fun to watch. Boom, that's true, very, very true, my friends. So stay tuned.